Our production is about to begin. During this performance, there will be loud noises, actors moving throughout the aisles, and a complete blackout. It is very important that you please stay seated throughout the duration of the performance for everyone's safety. What you are about to see is based on true stories from the Gospels of Jesus Christ. Some dialogues have been added to help illustrate what may have happened many years ago when Jesus walked the earth. It is our desire that all biblical and historical context and any artistic imagination are designed to support the truth of the Bible as it is written, not add to or take away from the scriptures. And now, prepare your hearts as we bring you the triumph of peace.
I've locked all the doors. We should all be safe. Peter. Oh, Peter. Come here, sit down. It's going to be okay. It's okay. No, it's not, Mary. Why would I deny him? Least of all, three times. I love him. Peter, he knows you love him. Mary, I remember the first time I saw him. I knew he was the Messiah. I saw the love in his eyes. He had authority in his words and a gentle embrace. This was our long awaited Messiah, our king, our warrior. I was so terrified to be in his presence. My sin is so great. Why would he want me? I'm a sinful man. We all are sinners. I am too. <laughs> he looked at me and Andrew, and he said that he would make us fishers of men. And I thought I knew what that meant, but now with him gone, it doesn't make any sense. I know, I know. So much of what he says doesn't make any sense. He speaks in parables, but, but we have to trust him. Trust that this is all a part of his plan. Mary, he chose me. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, please, please. I'm sorry. Mary, I'm a fisherman. I'm a nobody. That's why I messed up. Mary, he chose us to tell the world about his love. Us. Do you remember when he changed my name from Simon to Peter? Yes. Peter. The rock. How could a strong and sturdy rock deny him? No, no, I would never. Hey, hey friend, have you heard? They captured a teacher named Jesus. Uh, what? That man claiming to be God, that foul man, they finally captured him. Oh, uh, I don't know anything about that. How can you not know? He's been all over town. It's well, all anyone is talking about. Well, I'm not from around here. Well, where are you from? Look, I came here just to get warm, not to make friends. Please leave me alone. No, you're not from around here, are you? I can hear it in your accent. I saw you with those men in the garden, with the Nazarene. You're one of his followers. No, I'm not. I told you, I don't even know what you're talking about. No, she's right. You do look like one of his followers, you filthy blasphemer. We should tell the Pharisees about you. I told you, I don't know the man. Now leave me be. You have a Galilean accent, no. The man claiming to be God was from Galilee. Papa, I know that's him. I remember. He cut Malchus's ear off. You're a follower of the blasphemer. For someone who's from out of town, you sure seem a little uptight. What are you hiding? Nothing. Now for the final time, I swear on the name of Jehovah that I do not know the man. We all make mistakes. I denied him, Mary. Three times, just like he said. They've taken him away, and I didn't do anything to stop it. I'm a failure. I'm not a rock. Peter, Jesus called you the rock for a reason. Everything he says is with authority and purpose. You are exactly who he says you are. You are a rock. But how can that be? I'm so scared. I don't even know where Andrew or my wife is. What if they're in danger? I'm sure Andrew and Lily are okay. When daylight hits, they'll show up. We all know where to meet if anything goes wrong. Mary, I looked him in the eyes tonight. I looked him in the eyes and I told him that I love him and that I would follow him until the ends of the earth. And now he's gone. Well, I know Jesus. And if he left, it's because he had a reason. He didn't leave, Mary. 
It was taken, and we let it happen right before our eyes. I know, I know, I know, but, but this is Jesus we are talking about. The man who heals lepers, feeds the multitudes, casts out demons. He cast out my demons, remember? He is no ordinary man. Of course I remember. Miracle after miracle. It's supposed to be our king. He is our king, Peter. He is. He, he's just a different kind of king. I don't understand it, but I know he is king. He is the Messiah. The night that he delivered me. I was afraid when I saw him too. But I was also filled with peace. Terror and peace, both at the same time. It was such a strange feeling. As he came toward me, I could feel the demons in me resisting him. I could hear them shrieking inside of me. And then he touched me, and it was like a lightning, a mighty jolt. And instantly, all the shrieking was gone. And just like that, no more fear, no more terror. Just peace. peace, a peace I can't describe. And from that moment on, I have never been the same. I knew he was the Messiah, and I left everything to follow him. Well, there wasn't much to leave, but I followed Peter. We have seen so many miracles with him. And I've seen you and the others cast out demons in his name. Do, do you remember that man across the sea? The one with the son whose demons wouldn't come out. I just kept thinking to myself, we must not have enough faith. Where is our faith? Where is my faith? Yes, Jesus said that some spirits can only come out through prayer and fasting. Right, right. We still have so much to learn from him. So much. I heard him tell John, this and far greater things you will be able to do in my name. How? How is that possible? I don't understand. How is that possible now that they've taken him? Peter... They're going to kill Jesus. They're going to kill our teacher and our friend. Son, your sins are forgiven. Now pick up your mat and walk.
open your eyes, be healed. Your faith has made you well. Whoever believes in me, though he dies, he shall live. told you have nothing to do with this innocent I know, man. I know, Claude. Please, but, I beg you. But you know nothing of the pressures I have to do. <sighs> it's my <sighs> job to keep the peace out there. <sighs> and sometimes it comes with a great cost. Pilot, no. This dream. This dream? <laughs> it was horrifying. This dream? <laughs> Claudia, what am I supposed to do? Govern based on your fantasy? Pilot, no, please listen. I told you this was not just a dream. This was a warning. a warning. I suffered through this night terror. Pilot, you must leave him alone, please. Darling Claudia, I hate to see you in such distress. <laughs> but you must know it was nothing more than a nightmare. Please, my love. You've been hanging around these servants and they've been filling your head with all of these Jewish faces. Pilot, it's nothing more. Pilate, the scriptures say, for God speaks again and again. He speaks in dreams, in visions of the night. He whispers in their ears and terrifies them with warnings. He makes them turn from doing wrong. Pilate, I believe this is a warning from the gods above. Or the Jewish God. The Jewish God. I don't know. I believe he may be the one true God. One true God? Claudia, listen to yourself. This is no, absurd. No, you listen. I beg your pardon. You know Alexander is a dear friend of mine. Alexander? Of ours, yes. The centurion from the Galilean sect. Oh, the story of the servant. Yes. Do you remember what he told us? Jesus healed the servant without even laying hands on him. He was dead and Jesus brought him back to life. He is a miracle man. A miracle man. worker. Claudia, stop this. I am telling you, Pilate, I have nothing to do with earning him. Please. Claudia, now you, Alexander, <laughs> the Pharisees, the Sadducees, all I hear are voices playing in my head, making demands of me. What am I supposed to do? If I don't give them this man, there'll be riots in the streets, and Caesar, you'll have my head. I know, I know, but better to lose your head than to upset the one true God. He is innocent, and I fear for you if you do not let him go. Pilate, this dream, let him go. Give them Barabbas. Oh, Claudia. My love. You have such a beautiful heart. It reminds me every day of the day we were married. And why I married you. But if only the great governor of Judea could lead based on how he felt in his heart. But, Claudia, you know the world is just not that simple. Pontius, 
Yes, my friend. Jesus has finished his lashes, and the religious leaders have assembled in the courtyard. Thank you. Carry on. Maximus. Sir? Get Barabbas from his cell and bring him to the courtyard, along with Jesus. I'll be there in a moment. It shall be done. My love, I hear you. I do. And I'm going to do everything in my power to save this man. But right now, I have a job to do. I must go. My lady, what can I do for you? Quickly, grab me some parchment and ink. I must write a note to my husband, quickly, go. Yes, my lady. I have one last chance to keep him from making a grave mistake. You got a few more moments to live before they take you out to your crosses to be hung. Enjoy your last few breaths. Wait, what about Jesus? Are you bringing him back? And what's it to you, thief? I'm just curious. I'm just wondering if they freed him. No. It appears that he'll be hanging with the two of you. What? Why? What did he do? It seemed like he was innocent. Not according to your good people. Now just try and relax before we take you out. <laughs> That's pretty your God or whatever it is you Jews do. Relax. You fool. Hey, what do you care about that Jesus man? I don't know. There's something about him. Something I can't explain. Well, he is the king of the Jews. That must be it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The king of the Jews, the Messiah. <laughs> but that's ridiculous. Of course it is. If he was the Messiah, he would have broken himself free. And he would have broken us free. Yes. But didn't you see? The... They beat him. They whipped him. And they spat on him. And the last time I saw him, he was hardly recognizable as a human being. He didn't even put up a fight. Probably because he was exhausted. Maybe. But did you see the way he looked at us? Uh, the way he looked at me? There's something in his eyes. Yeah. That's called terror. What? Absolute fear. And I see it in your eyes, too. No. Yeah. No. That wasn't it. It, it was, it was peace. Ah. He looked at me as if he knows me. But he doesn't. I saw love in his eyes. But why would he love me? I don't deserve it. I'm a criminal. He doesn't love you. You're imagining things. Ugh. The fear is getting into your head. No. Nobody loves us. We're alone. We've always been alone. Now we're dying alone. But I've never seen a man react the way that he did to all that abuse and pain that he endured. What if he is the Messiah? Well, I don't know. 
Why don't you ask him? You'll get your chance in a moment. We'll all be hanging around together soon enough. What am I thinking? He can't be the Messiah. He wouldn't be in chains if he were, right? I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. Who does he think he is? Pretending to be God. What kind of man spreads false hope like that? Yeah. You're right. Messiah? Oh, but I wish that he was. Because I don't want to die. <laughs> Not like this. Me neither.
be the Savior. But look at you. Look at us. How could you lie to us? Look at us. He's no Savior. He's pathetic. He's worse than we are. We're all pathetic. Come on, man. Let's cast lots for this fine piece of linen. Are you in paradise? 